Are we both hot? So hot? Hot like Masabi when I bust rhymes. I'm like Leanne Rhymes because I'm all about values. Burt Camper got the mad hits. You try to match wits. You try to hold me, but I bust through. Come check a bracket, check a little bit. Find it. You know what I? You know what I have? To, I only have one thing to say about them, and the way they look, the way they play their music. I think they should be called "We Don't Like Bare Naked Ladies." <laughs> That's what I think. Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Couch Pilots. Hello. Hello, everyone. It's, this is the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Bottle Cap Kid, and with me, as always, is the podcasting god himself, Blake Clayton. Hello, Blake Clayton. Hello, sir. How are you on this fine winter evening? It's 60 degrees. <laughs> We're having a real odd winter to start. I am worried about tornadoes right now i don't know if it's going to happen what do you think do you, when it's suspiciously not the temperature of that season do you start to think about severe weather no okay no. What, what do you think about uh i think about the crops i think about uh how the dog poop has not yet gotten frozen and i keep getting it on my shoes because it's not gotten cold enough uh which which, which hurts me it hurts me bad what happens if no one picks up dog poop over the course of a couple seasons? Uh, it's the, 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 the rain and mm. uh, you know the snow will right. mush it up and it will go into the ground and fertilize. That's, I mean, that's, what, that's the way it was in the olden days. And so that's what I'm trying. I, I'm looking at my, my uh, pilgrim ancestry. Oh, uh, I didn't my, know. Are you directly related to the pilgrims? Yeah, Bob the pilgrim. Bob the Bob, Bob the Bob the Pilgrim. Bob the Pilgrim. Yes. Was he on the Mayflower? Yes. It, 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 Bob the Pilgrim. Mm-hmm. Can we kill the Indians? Yes, we can. That's what he. <laughs> that's what his. I like Indians, so but Bob didn't. Are you talking about Native Americans or Indians from India? <sighs> Come on now, that's a touchy subject right now. I, suppo- I, I suppose it is. I don't want the is's. <laughs> I don't want the is's after me. It almost sounds like is, a disease. Is, right? Isle. Isle. Is, <laughs> Uh, the Snoop Dogg is very prolific. No, let's just say. Hey, speaking of Snoop Dogg, we think we saw Snoop Dogg at the Cracker Barrel in Morton on Molly's birthday. Uh, it might be because it was the only black guy there, but he did look like Snoop Dogg. I think it was him incognito. I think the fewer black people you have around, the more likely they are to look like Snoop Dogg. Once you get a bunch of them together, you start thinking, wait, 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 that guy's... No, it can't be. But once you, once you get one black dude... He, I think it was. I, I, me and Molly both just stopped and looked at each other, and I go, does that, does that look like? And she goes, Snoop Dogg. And then my grandma, of course, goes, what? What? I'm like, no, you're not going to know this. What, what was he doing? Did he, did he order something? He was, they were leaving. Him, him and an older uh, gentleman, and they were leaving. And man, I, I swear to gosh. I swear to gosh. Because I'm trying to. The older gentleman, well, yeah, thank you for saying gosh. Um, was the older gentleman uh, Don Magic Juan? The Bishop Don Magic Juan? Uh, it used to be the Don Juan. Now his name is just Juan. <laughs> uh, let's get this mother started right. Let's get this mother started quickly. Yeah, we'll try. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. This is getting started. This is us getting ready. This is revving the engines. This is maybe people tuning into the show for the first time and saying, what am I listening to? What is this rubbish about these racist idiots say, thinking they seem... No, we're not racist. I, was just... I know. I, I'm not racist. Um, well, I mean, I have, I have a black friend. I hate, I hate all people. I, I've, I've, I've said I, it before. I've said it a thousand times. I hate everybody. I can't make me a racist. I, I used to everybody. date a black girl. That's not, that doesn't make racist, right? You, you had uh, intercourse... <laughs> with an Asian girl, yeah, I've I've been with Asians and, and Mexican women. So, no so, Mexican women. No, how, how is that? Um, I don't know. Do, it's, do you get demasked? You know, what? I tell you what. You turn off the lights. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same, my friend. 
So, so what is this show about? What are we doing? <laughs> we don't even. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th- I, th- I think it's two different things between what what I typed out what we're going to be doing and what we're actually doing. I think this is what it is. Is is you give us that five minutes of kind of freelance at the beginning. It's a mistake. And <laughs> it needs to be cut out completely. <laughs> well, uh, Blake and I, for, for people who are thoroughly confused, which you have every right to be, it's your God-given right to be confused when you're talking about fornicating with women of other ethnicities and whether or not you spotted Snoop Dogg at a local Cracker Barrel or whether you're disrobing during the recording of the show. What is happening over there? Uh, Blake and I watch television pilots – that never made it onto air or were only around for like an episode or two. These are uh, these shows pro- uh, that probably suck, but they need to be watched. We cannot and will not let them go to waste. I like to think of Blake and myself as boob tube hyenas. I will say it once again. We we come in and we pick up the scraps that televisions. That's exactly. And I don't know about you, Blake, but that's exactly what I sound like when I'm watching these. When I'm watching these and when I'm having sex. <laughs> so are you like ever? Having at it with your wife, and she's like, "Are you watching? A, are you watching a shitty pilot?" <laughs> I I have a note. I have a notepad with me when I'm watching pilots and when I'm having sex. That was she uh, does not like this. That was the original cut of that Seinfeld episode where George was trying to sleep with his girlfriend, watch TV, and eat cured meats at the same time. Yeah. Originally, they were supposed to watch crappy television pilots right, for a podcast, <laughs> right? Well. Uh, instead of having Hollywood chuck these uh, these sometimes well crafted but never very good uh, television pilots, when they throw them to the curb, we watch them, we talk about them, we give you the info on where you can find them for yourself so you can jump in on the fun, and we do so by the decade. We're watching shows right now from the 1970s, and we will work our way right to the present. Well, won't won't you, the listener, join us? Yeah, in uh, the format of the show, we have. Season one, hmm. which is going to be ten episodes, yep. and those are going to have the seventies, and then season two, the eighties, and, and so on and so forth. How do you think that progression will go? Do you, are you looking forward to getting closer and closer to present times as they more will align culturally with where we are? Yeah, I think uh, the doing these. I mean, we have to start somewhere. You got to start, and somewhere. we have to show the evolvement. Hopefully, but you know, I, I'm hoping that you know, thirty episodes down the road, we're going to show the evolvement of television. Yeah. Or, or we might not, but um, we want to see that evolution over time. What I'm hoping is for we get these people now, that, and they're like, ah, like, me, like me. This was from 1979. I was four years old. I don't, yeah. I don't, you know. Uh, but hopefully, you know, you stay with us. People will be more enticed as we go along. I think so. You know, I, and I've said this to you on in private, not on air, that when people listen to a podcast. They, I think they want they want something that they are interested in because everything is so niche anymore. It's sure. even even on television. Millennials. Millennials, sure. You have a million choices. Cable is dying. People are they want things on demand. They want exactly what they're looking for. Everything is so specific that people are tuning in to podcasts because it's a subject that they enjoy very much or are knowledgeable about or want to become knowledgeable about, just in general interested in, and or it's entertaining and or. They like the people. Sure. So we – maybe not everyone's interested in 1970s. It is a very specific you know, sure. uh, subgenre of whatever. But hopefully they find our banter entertaining, which I do. That's why I'm here every week. And hopefully they like us specifically. That'll keep, that'll keep them coming back. I, they'll probably like you better than me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> why are we discussing this show? What, what show is it, first of all? What are we watching? Starstruck. What year is it? 1979. And you were four. I was four years of so age. So that cur- that makes you 28 right now. Is that right? Yep. And that makes me 28, too. We're, yeah. We were born on the same day. Uh-huh. Not brothers. We didn't know each other. Born on opposite sides of the globe. But, we, but we're both exactly the same age. And I think you speak well fluent English. Thank you very much. Yeah, for I come... being born in Australia. <laughs> well, it was not a good day when I watched this one because uh, not a very good show. But I will tell you. i tell you why we chose it. Uh, we chose Starstruck because Criteria. we found it. Yep, it was available to be found, and that's why we watch these shows. We we have a strict criteria for this podcast. Yeah, We're, very um, strict. Uh, first one, mm-hmm. do can we find it? Yeah. Two, is it free? Right. Three, did one and two, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Can't check that third one off if you don't have the first two, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so um, I know. I mean, obviously. Everyone's so enticed, not only by the ending of our last episode, you got the trailer, but by just the, the amounts of glorious praise we're dumping on Starstruck right now. So you're probably asking yourself, where can I find the show? You. How was that? 
you. Where can I find the show? I want to watch it. I'll do the rest of the show like that if you want. If, if that'll bump up our, our listenership. <laughs> I don't think a Kennedy impression is going to do. I want you to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Half of my head. It's on my wife's lap. She doesn't seem as distraught as she should. <laughs> i got a quick story about that. Okay. Uh, which, uh, who has a story about the Kennedy assassination? The people who didn't live through it. My brother... Um, he runs a thrift store, and I used to run a version of it locally. And he um, sometimes he would go to other thrift stores to see if he could find things at a good deal that he could resell, or even things that he liked himself. He, one time he came across um, at an auction at a place called the Mission Mart a bust of um, JFK. And he didn't know if he won the auction yet. And he, we were dry, I was driving with him through the town of Bloomington, Illinois. He said, you know what? Call the Mission Mart and see if they I won the auction. So I give him a call, and I say, hey, my brother just um, – I know your auction ended for the JFK bus. I was wondering um, if you if you won the auction. It's a it's a JFK bust uh, pre assassination, is what I told them. Nice. <laughs> and, they, and it went right over their head. And it, even if it didn't, I would like. I wonder if they got the joke and were just so disgusted by right, what I right. had to say about I'm the assassination. Not even, I'm not even going to comment <laughs> back to this guy. And yeah, nor should they. Nor should, I'm not worth commenting. Um, anyway, that's that's my only JFK story. Um, he had sex with Marilyn Monroe. You gotta give him props. Oh man, I'd, you I'd, know what? I was I say I would I would I would let my head get blown off to have sex with her. <laughs> if, he, if, really. if he knew within a year or two, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, because it was more than once. It obviously, happened. More, he had sex with her more than once. Uh, it was the free willing days of the White House. Some of the so stories you hear about it. Yeah. Um, ugh. Anyway, <laughs> a little off track. But hey, starstruck, right? Am I right, guys? I figure since it's only a half hour show, we get more time <laughs> to banter. Sorry. Um, if you want to watch this, and you do. If, you, if there's any question in your mind whether or not, I'll just answer for you. You do want to watch this oh, one. Yeah. Check it out on YouTube. Simply search Starstruck Space 1979. Starstruck is all one word. Then sit back, relax, and probably fall asleep or go blind from rolling your eyes too hard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's, let's get into the show. Let's, uh, let's, let's learn about Starstruck. Flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. <laughs> it's my oh. favorite part. Yeah, it is. You, you like the plane taking off. And why wouldn't you? You know, I know we have a couple of... Avid- we're only... F- what? We're only f- five episodes into this bad boy. Bad boy. And I already know that we, we have passengers... We have passengers that are Loyal, on every flight. Yeah, frequent flyers. Yep, free. That's it. Frequent flyers. Those and are that's our that, those are our names of fans. Are Ma- frequent flyers. Michael Sink, you have gotten five <laughs> frequent flyer points. That that gets you. Michael Sink, of course, from Rocky Top Vapor, mm-hmm. where IBWIP did a live show, a couple live shows. Yeah. Um, we, we we also know him as the Lawnmower Man. The Lawnmower. Yeah. Jeff so, Fahey, the lawnmower man. Just want to give him a little props because I know he's checking out the show. I, there's there's some people that like this show. Mad props to Michael Sink. Not mad. Why would you get mad at him? Frustrating props. Um, <laughs> we should hulking out props. Hulk uh, agitated. <laughs> during the takeoff, that's when we we learn about what happened on the show and any interesting facts. We do a little bit of digging here. So uh, online, what they say is uh, it's the story set in the 22nd century. Follows the adventures of the McAllister family, owners of McAllister's Midway Inn, a hotel restaurant saloon on an orbiting way station somewhere between Earth and Pluto. Yes. Yeah, and it was uh, it, this was considered to be a lost pilot, but thankfully, a gentleman by the name of Chuck Serino, who happened to be an effects technician on the show, saved his copy on a VHS tape and has uploaded it on his YouTube channel. That's the only reason this is available to be seen, wow. because this man. Um, this is what he had to say about Starstruck. You ready for this? He, he worked for it. He worked for it. Okay. He, he was there when this atrocity took place. Okay. So he has first-hand knowledge of it. He says, I did the visual effects and supervised the miniature spaceships. My good friend Jim uh, Wynorski, a production assistant on this show, went on to direct dozens of B-movies for Roger Corman. Um, now I now I write music for Jim's movies, and many of them play on sci-fi. Other people of note are Dick Durock, who plays the villain at the end, who also played Swamp Thing in the film Return of the Swamp ah. Thing, um, who was also directed by Jim Wynorski in that film 10 years later. Uh, Robert Short, who played Hudson, the robot, uh, also created and built the robots for the, this cult classic uh, called Ch- Chopping Mall, 
also directed by Jim Warnowski and the music by me. Uh, many of the aliens at the bar were played by actors who appeared in the Cantina band sequence in Star Wars. Uh, the masks they wear in this show were of their own personal construction. I could go on and on. So this wow. guy has so much knowledge. I really wish we could have got a hold of him. We, uh, you know, hindsight being twenty twenty, yes, that would be. Pre- and you know what? He's probably available to be talked to about this. <laughs> we can probably call him right now. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's let me Google his number. I'm sure it's available. Um, so let's let's dig into it now that you got a little inside look behind the scenes. Let's let's tell you what the product was. Um, Blake, what were you, what did what did you have to think about Starstruck? We're gonna go through the plot then. Yeah, we're gonna, all right. Let's, let's plot it up. Uh, well, first and foremost, we have to give the forewarning that at the beginning of this YouTube film, uh, it's not the best quality. Give it a few minutes. It even says on the screen. Uh, we played the trailer in the last episode. The audio is really rocky. Uh, but just just wait a few Stick minutes. Stick with it. Stick with I'd it. I'd say about two, three minutes. Yeah, two or three minutes. Uh, basically, it starts out, which I was under the impression, uh, it starts out with a little boy, Rupert, yeah. talking to a robot. Walking down the hall. A thick Irish brogue on oh, this sure. robot. Yeah. I, you know, I'll even, I'll even say before that, Mrs. Bridges. I, Mrs. Bridges, yes. I love the theme of music. I love that song. It was crazy. It was, it, but I think what made it a cool, like, is if you watch it too, because it like takes the family from when they landed in on the in the United States as pilgrims, yeah, all the way till their family launching into space. Did you ever watch? Uh, you can't do that on television. Yes. Okay, that the beginning reminded me so much. Yeah, and, and they, they honest, uh, I think you can't do that on television. Came out in 1979, which is when this came out. So the themes are not the song necessarily, but the style, the artwork. Right. It, it, it looked like photographs. And like drawings on top of photo, it was right. very odd. It was that same style used in the opening for you can't do that on television. Uh, very specific style. Um, the intro was interesting, but the music didn't necessarily go along with what the show is. Yeah, but it I, it was very catchy. Yeah, very catchy. I am tempted to sing it. I will not. <laughs> um, Come on. <laughs> room to grow. Room to grow. The McAllister's Michael, there are your frequent flyer points <laughs> all used up. You listen to that. Uh, well, you want to go through the pilot with yeah. the plot of it? Yeah. And, um, and, oh, man, I tell you, it, it really was. People keep mentioning Star Wars. It did feel like, let, let's, take a, let's take the robots and the creatures from Star Wars and just kind of build comedy around that. Right. Let's, let's, take, the, let's take the scene uh, in the canteen. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. And make it into F. Opening scene: the kid and the robot go down to like the brig or the breakfast area, sure, wherever of the family where, yeah, of the, the McAllister family. And it's not only the family; it's like it's, I think it's like everyone who works, works there yeah. kind of lives there together. Yeah. And um, in the scene, that the short, round, seemingly female robot, which I can only be described as their version of R two D two is uh, preparing breakfast, and then the tall, thin, seemingly male robot, which is their version of C-3PO, wobbles in and says to the short bot, I'll never forget last night. <laughs> did you Did you yeah. catch this? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> first of all... Um, Where did, it came out of nowhere. It, it, it was one of the first lines in the whole yeah. thing. And um, <laughs> is, um, is, I'll never forget last night. First of all, robots, uh, robots should have memory units, so by their own nature, they should never forget anything right. unless their memory is wiped. And second of all... Uh, robots be humping. Am I right? Well, that accent she had, it's kind of hard not to want to just stick your... Hard drive? Stick your SD card. Into her motherboard? Into her motherboard. <laughs> it is, I don't, um... I think I'm going to die. You think you're going to die? What's wrong? Do you get, you want to put a stone on that? <laughs> <laughs> My legs are dead. I I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh boy! If you if if you want to get that joke and so many others, watch previous episodes of Couch Pilots or listen to them rather, or you can watch them. I guess you can watch the the numbers tick away. Um, robots are built. I this is <laughs> this is like when um I, who who does who destroyed Roman culture? They became too vain, too uh, narcissistic. This is what the robots are because robots. There's no reason for them to have sex except pure pleasure. Oh They're, yeah, these robots are hedonists. They're not procreating. Like the Bible says we should do from sex, that it's simply enjoyment that these robots are sure, having sex. They, they have nothing better to do except to get their jollies off. 
What, what do you think that think looks their like? Their lights light up. What you, is that what it is? I, I would think that robots having sex has got to be super fucking loud and going to keep that little kid Rupert up all night. <laughs> A lot of spring noises. Uh, and about the same time uh, after that after that line was made, the kid sits down. Yep. And all of a sudden, his cereal starts to explode because he is eating Big Bang cereal. First joke, coming in hard, coming in fast. Uh, every joke thereafter has a laugh track, which is hideous. You know, they're walking down the hallway in the beginning. There's laugh tracks. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, who, uh, the, the guy who was in charge of the laugh track had just had Tourette's and just kept pushing <laughs> the button. He went a little laugh track crazy, as those people are, are off to do. Um, the cereal is popping and bursting in the bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, what if he downed some of that stuff and it bursts through his tum-tum like so much alien? Uh, you know that said, I, I'd still buy some probably. Oh yeah, it would be cool. Like it'd be like a cool joke to play on your kids. It's like the <laughs> have them explode. It, yeah, it's yeah. like the, well, have the 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 cereal explode oh, in front okay, of them. Gotcha. It's kind of like the when your birthday uh, candles, you blow them out and they light back <laughs> up. You're just like ah, fuck you. <laughs> um, oh, shit. The effects in this are, are pretty rough. In fact, there's an entire scene in an orchard, which happens later in the episode. But the, this entire scene was in green screen. And it's one thing to have like a green screen in the background, but the whole scene. Did right. you notice Everything, this? Yeah, the whole Everything. I yeah. think they probably had like a tree. Yep, one that, tree. That he's picking one apples off of in a yeah. bucket, and everything else was green screen. Saturday Night Live does green screens all the time, and it's pretty noticeable when they do it, but with t- that's with today's technology. Think about it in 1979, how awful that right. If you haven't seen it, think about how bad it was. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I apologize. That was rude. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, there was the weird fuzzy penis pet. Do you remember the fuzzy penis yeah, pet? Yeah, and the, the guy who he was on. Um, you, oh, sorry. And uh, you could see the strings? I was looking for the strings. I didn't see them. Maybe it was just, maybe I just was like, I know there's strings. I, no, there had to have been. The guy, the, there's a little fuzzy pet. Um, weren't there something in Star Trek like that, little fuzzy guys like that? Yeah. Uh, whatever those were called. I don't know what they were. But um, it was on this guy's lap. And he was a guy traveling to the space station where they were, the McAllister space station, he was bringing in talent because I think they were like holding auditions sure. for like a, some sort of act or a band or a singer. Right, because it's, it's a lounge. It's, it, yeah, that's kind of my question too. It's like a hotel, diner, dance club. It's even a dance club at some point. This guy who was bringing the talent, he's like, he's like a Rodney Dangerfield oh, knockoff. Yeah. yeah, it was. And I don't remember what his name was, but I've seen him in other stuff. Uh, and he, you know, he's the... You know, definitely. Oh, you recognize that? Oh, guy. yeah, I recognize that guy. Character actor, maybe. Um, he's he was clearly Jewish. Oh, yeah. Which plays into the character of show business and whatever. And he was bug eyed, like mm. Rodney Dangerfield, like Dead Ringer, right? Yep, and had a fluffy white ball, and that he was pushing down. <laughs> And and it, old, it, it had peed on him. Some old woman was in the yeah. shitter, and she came out and said, "Thanks for watching my fuzz fuzz." And the they, fuzz fuzz ends up dying. It does. They, everyone lands at the station. Everyone comes off to either stay there, eat there, or, or, or audition. Right. And this woman who has this little fuzz pet, she sits down at the table, and she's like, I will have some of your famous apple pie. And you know what you get if you get some of their famous apple pie? You get one-fourth of a pie. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, you know, it's like we're in space. Apples are hard to come by, but guess what? Apples. This is the only place in space to get apples. They said this was they were they were lucky enough to save some seeds. Right. Oh, good yeah. thinking, McAllisters. Yes. And uh, and they this is the only place in the and because like apple pie is is a foreign. No one knows oh, what that is. Yeah, they didn't even know what it is. It's like what is what is this? What is this 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 food that you have that everyone in the galaxy says is so amazing? I've and, traveled for light years for this, and I want to have some of that. And I don't know what it's called. Oh, it's homemade apple pie. That's right, homemade apple pie. Famous at only you get only at the McAllisters. Um, they only have apples there. It's the only place in the whole galaxy you can get it. Um, boy, a lot of stuff happens. So uh, then, um, I don't know, the, the gay, rich, fat guy, villain number one. Now, see, that guy looked familiar to me. Yeah, he's. I, I, I remember him, too. I've seen him stuff, too. Uh, he's kind of like the half-ass villain. Mm-hmm. Like, every, you know, there is, there's levels of villainness, and he's kind of like the half-ass. And like, he thinks he's a villain. He is a bad guy. Yeah. But he can only go so far. He comes in, and he brings in a young pilot. That, that who, it's from there, and who would I mean? If this show were to continue, that guy would have been Orville? a main character too, right? Yeah. The oh, guy, yeah. he was like in that white jumpsuit. He looked like a member of the Bee Gees or something. Yep. yep. Um, he comes in with that. Fe- it's like it's that matted down feathered hair. 
You know what I mean? It's like so. It's like he had feathered hair, and then someone cracked an egg on top of his head. Yeah, or it was like yeah, like a like a perm kind of yeah like, that's, like f- that's laid out for a while. Like he had a perm, and like he wore a hat a bunch that right. matted. It right. <laughs> he comes in with this big fat guy. He says, "I want some of that sweet sweet apple pie." I keep hearing about it. He grabs some of it, and he's like, "You know what? I think I want to buy this place." And the guy's like, "McAllister says, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's awful nice of you. I uh, really appreciate the offer. It sounds real good." Uh, no, no. He, you know what? He's got his mind set on something. He wants it. Right. He's going to get it. So what does he do? He calls in a bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. Just that one thing. Just that one thing. No, no, I don't. I, I don't think I could sell it to you. He didn't try to. He didn't try to crack the whip on him. He didn't no. try to get him in negotiations. He, did, he didn't try to put the squeeze on him, just like nope. him. He's, He's like, like, listen here. Okay, you said no to me. I'm going to get the big side. Now you're dead. Now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> which, which is the guy that you said was in the swamp thing comes in. right. Doesn't have one line. Does he not d- doesn't. Have, it, nope. And he is so clearly Darth Vader, right? Like he's got a helmet on. It's in the same shape as Darth Vader. Right. He's wearing all black. He's got a black cape. He looks like a goon. Yeah. He looks like a goofy goon. <laughs> and uh, that's where the special effects oh, the old, boy. The, 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 that the guy was on, uh, it was just a red diamond kind of shape just going randomly across. Like a disco ball. Mm-hmm. He took out like a big. What would you think that? What do you think that looked like? It looked like he had a toaster on the end of his hand. It was like a. Like the first George Foreman grill, like the yeah, small yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just spray painted it black and put a handle on it. <laughs> like he clamped it on his right hand and and shot a uh, a disco ball across the club there. Because at this point, it's the, the diner has gone into the evening and it's a dance club. All these weird space aliens and creatures and all these weird faces around the, the floor. The band's playing music. The the, the kid is playing a so a hard. rake. He's pl- oh man! Did you see how hard he was getting oh, down? Oh god! He was like Eddie Van Halen <laughs> with that thing. So the, the dance club's going on. Darth Vader walks in, mean mugging. He orders a uh, uh, purple fog or something, some weird drink at the counter. <laughs> you remember that guy who ordered the, purple fog? Yeah, the, the Jewish uh, talent <laughs> scout. He's like, I'll take a purple fog. It's been a long flight. And those aliens look at him like, oh, geez, oh, that's, geez. Some hard, that's some hard yeah, stuff. hard. <laughs> and, then, and then what do you do with purple fog? I think you just breathe it in. Yeah, you just put his face over it. <laughs> Which can't be good for you. Um, so Darth Vader comes in there. Um, and you know, actually right before this happened, I want to mention, uh, Rupert, who you'd mentioned earlier, he's the youngest child on, in like the main cast. He must've snuck out of bed yes. and he was like, he was up on a balcony, like in a railing and he was looking down at the party. And to me, this is every kid's nightmare that the, the party starts as soon as you go to bed. Right. Every kid is like fighting. It's like, I don't want to go to bed. I'm not tired. The kid's obviously tired. You put him to bed and the kid's in there clutching his blanket. Think, I know they're out there just having the time it's of their life. So much fun. So much case, fun. I'm going to go get a drink real. of water and go pee. <laughs> That is really happening. They are having one hell of a shindig down there, and the kids just like coming yeah. out of bed, like, "Oh, it's true, everything's true." Wow! But I would have sat here and watch it. Look at those girls' breasts. <laughs> and then that little robot who got rammed the night before, I was like, "Hey, get back to bed." <laughs> and I and I noticed over the why that kid was leaning over, I noticed the gun on the wall. I missed that. Oh, and the oh no, the uh, like a musket or the something. musket. And I was like, "Why is that musket on the wall?" And I tell you why it's on the wall because Ben McAllister gets his hands on that. The main character of the show, pretty handsome. Uh, talk about Dead Ringer. There's your Han Solo right there. He even yep. had a vest on. He even had the with the with the tie kind of yep. the tie kind of uh, collar thing. Total rip off. <laughs> yeah, this was this was this was a really bad. Uh, you know, it was like, it's like a parody or a hey, satire of this. This this Star Wars thing is really blowing up. Let's get out. This was 1979. The first Star Wars, 1977, right? Right. Seven, was it 79, 77, 79, 81? Yeah. So this is right about when Empire comes out. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah riding on the coattails of Star Wars. Um, piss poor. Oh, <laughs> piss poor. <laughs> very piss poor. I, you know, I, I was I, – I'll, I'll say this. Thank you for being 30 minutes long. Oh yeah, it, not that it because uh, the jokes like at the beginning of it. There's joke after joke like like a comedy writer wrote this joke, this joke, yeah. this joke, and they're they then they're like five minutes into it and they're like, oh shit, we we got to actually tell a story. You know what I mean? So yeah. that all the jokes went away. Yeah, were, like it was bam, bam, bam. Hey everybody, start laughing! Ha ha ha! We got gotcha. you. Now you got. We got you. Now we got you. Um. So yeah, so he shoots that disco ball. Ben McAllister grabs that musket. He blasts. Somebody throws it to him. Yeah, that girl he hired that came in, Amber. With that fat dude, Amber. Mm-hmm. I, I love that too. Like all these, or like hundreds, or like a thousand years in the future, or whatever. Right. And like, there's all these different, like everyone's name, like Ben, Mark, <laughs> Tommy, Eric, Jenny. You know, it's just right. like, okay, how about how about Zoomin or, or Glufkin or something? You know, just weird. Nope, just just a guy who lives next door to me right now. 
throws him the musket. Ben McAllister, he doesn't kill him because I don't think there'd be a lot of killing on this show. No. He blasts the foreman right off of his arm. He goes over there and gives him the one-two hullabaloo. Haymaker blasts him, gives him just a like the McAllisters knocker. have been doing for centuries. <laughs> That's, that's the only reason they're still here. That's what they. Hey, that's the way they beat the hell out of those Indians. Fighting, fighting for their lives through the centuries. They're like, I, this is my apple pie recipe. Nobody's gonna get it. You're talking about, are are they from the past? Is this a tra- time traveling situation? I or? don't think it's a time travel. I think it's 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 every generation, every generation of the McAllisters. They came. They had an in. They you know blah blah blah. And with each, they they just. So you think you think that's what the intro to the whole show was trying to show us? Yeah. That, that these people they were pilgrims. They and, were and, and in one form or another. They, Americans. They're always they're yep. always been pilgrims. They've always been people out there. You know, putting it on the, the line, common working man. hard. Yeah. Yep. The okay. Common so man they, working hard. They come from family that oriented. It's that yep. okay. And they have apple pie. And they, <laughs> the sweet sweet apple pie. Sweet ass pie. Apple pie. At the end. Uh, it wraps up pretty quickly after that. He he blasts Darth Vader. I get, he gives him you know like a blast him with a slobber knocker. He's out on the floor, and then it just like cuts to that girl singing. Yeah, roll credits. It, it was a, it was a song that was popular in like the seventies. Oh, what, what song was? It? I don't even remember. I, I don't remember what the name of it was either. Uh, oh, something about falling in love. Because oh. of course they they have to set up the <laughs> they have to set up the love story between these two. Yeah, and McAllister didn't even want to give her a job. He's like, I don't even want to hear you sing. Well, she yeah, because they're like, I need a job. It's I like, need a job. It's like this isn't this isn't for you. This isn't you know. You're you're too pretty. You're too delicate to be working in a place like this. <laughs> but we got our we got our eight year old kid upstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a, you're a real good guy, Ben. Um, and then that's it. That's all it is. So take that in, ingest it, think about it while uh, we we give you this little FCF promo right here. It can be exciting to start new relationships. The ins and outs of getting to know each other, the inside jokes you create, and the frank and honest conversations about anything and everything. I, Heather, am beginning a new relationship with Heather, a Kaluna shrub that grows in Europe and Asia Minor. She's a wildflower with a roaming spirit and a tough exterior. I thought, what better way to get to know my new shrubbery than to discuss the ins and outs of sex? We'll be taking a look at each other and laughing about how funny scrotums look, peppering it with facts and friendship. Sex with Heather will be coming (laughs) on Wednesdays, only at fcfnetwork.com. Boom is right. Boom. Boom is right. Way to go, Heather. Um, That show, Sex with Heather... Very odd premise. There's nothing else out there like it. It's it's very unique and interesting. And if you have questions about sex, if you, maybe if you're a plant and you're listening and you want to know about sex, uh, you could do no better than that show. Subscribe to it on iTunes. Check it out. FCFnetwork.com. Go there. Listen to it. All the links are there. Yeah. Rate it in iTunes. Listen to it on iTunes. Um, enjoy it. Heather is great. She's a good. She's a great part of IBWIP, and she's uh, spun off to do her own little thing. And uh, it's it's turned out to be great. And I promise. It's gaining. It's going to gain momentum. Like mm-hmm. she's going to get her. She's got a great premise. She's doing it by herself for the first time. You know, each episode's getting smoother and smoother. And she's she's she sees a you know there's a goal. She's there's got she's goal. got a story arc for this. Yep. She's she's going to town on it. I up. went to um, review that show in iTunes, and it never posted my. I, I posted a couple reviews out there, and then I went back a couple days later to see if my reviews were there, and they were not for hers. It, my post was entitled suck it tom hanks that's what my post was called and i think that's why it, it didn't ever post it uh-huh. and the only reason and i like tom hanks don't get me wrong but when i think about sex with heather the podcast anyway um i think about it, it's just her it's her talking to this plant about sex it's a one person tour de force and i think about tom hanks when he was in uh, castaway sure. well, so- yeah i mean in the in the very beginning in the very end there were other members, uh, other actors in the film, but for about an hour and a half, it was just Tom Hanks. And guess what? Very entertaining film. Yeah. He carried that whole movie himself. He did an awesome job, and that's what Heather's doing with this podcast. So I put "suck at Tom Hanks" kind of as a joke, and I think uh, iTunes said, "Oh no, we like Tom Hanks. We don't like you. <laughs> right? We don't like your review. <laughs> we don't know you." <laughs> but know that I, I did give it five stars uh, because it is such an interesting, unique, and Heather's very funny. Um, so I would definitely suggest to everyone that that's a good enough plug, right? Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Heather. Um, so let's let's move on to why this show didn't work out. And I mean, let me how, let's count the ways. Am I right? Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. I'll tell you why I don't think it worked. I think this show was too silly. 
it was um, the show didn't know what it was. Uh, these character, there were horny robots, um, genuine like genuine singing mixed in, a, um, some action like corny action, but it was mainly too goofy, just too many cheesy jokes. Yeah, it was it, it, like you said, it was kind of all over the place. It, it didn't really find out what it was. Was it a comedy? Was it a comedy? Hey, you know that typical sitcom. Hey, there's writers. We're going boom. Here's a bada, yeah. boom, bada bang, a punchline, bada bang, or uh, you know, was it a, a, a futuristic sci-fi show, or was it a love story? It, yeah, it's. I mean, you want elements, I think, a little bit, but it just it was too. There was too, like, a ton of comedy at first, and then it got very dramatic, and then there was some. It just it, it was it was all over the place. It didn't make sense. And, and you had made a statement via text with me this morning that you described it as like a Saturday morning show. Yeah, it felt like in the vein of uh, like HR Puff and stuff. Like, um, who are those hacks that wrote, wrote all that garbage? It was um, I can't remember uh, those famous. You know who I'm talking about, though. There, it's those two dudes, and it wasn't Hannah Hannah Barbera. It was um, oh, I cannot remember. If I heard the names, I know. But the guys who created all those crappy shows, like in the right. in the late like the mid '70s to early '80s, all those puppet shows. Oh, they're terrible. Uh, total hacks. Uh, this would fit perfectly with that because he had a lot of creatures like H.R. Puff and stuff would have and monsters and that sort of thing. And if you could, you could dumb it down. That, we, we talk about where we'd like to see it go if it survived. Um, that could be an aspect. Yeah, take out, take out the love story thing. Focus on Rupert and his life on this ship. Yeah. Uh, make the jokes kid jokes, and you got yourself a Saturday morning show. Yeah, I think, that's, yeah I think you're right about that All for right, sure. Well, you want to start writing that this weekend? Then? I think we probably should. Okay. Um, if I were to improve it, though, I would say ditch the laugh track first. Oh, God, it was horrible. It's, it ditch the over-the-top creatures. I, I, you can have bizarre aliens, but they should look decent. Right. And these, these did not. I, there's literally a guy, um, like you'd see a half-ass uh, – Cost Halloween costume at like a, a office party or something where it's it's a dude dressed in like foil and then he's got a monster mask on and he he's leaning just to the right and on the left hand side he's got like a second head yeah he was the other he was that was the other uh, <laughs> they were singing yeah was, and the other part of this that we forgot to talk about was the Jewish comedian. With the with the hair oh, sticking up, he's like, I think he looks familiar too. He's like, Hey, what is this? You know, I just came in from Pluto. Boy, my arms tired. Like, get the hell out yeah. of here! Like, it's it, unnecessary. And no, and no one was laughing at it. No. even they knew on the show it was bad. Right. <laughs> it was a tiny man. Um, so, where would you you if you if it survived, you would have liked to seen it become like a, a children's yeah, Ru- uh, Saturday morning show. Uh, Rupert was it was a cute kid. Yeah, uh, big smile. Seemed to not have any uh, hesitation on the screen. You know, on camera, make it about him. I, you know what, I, I didn't think a lot about that. I mean, my text maybe it prompted some of that thought, but you're absolutely right. I think that could have been a kids show. Um, focus on, like you said, uh, Rupert. Focus on the robots yeah, more. M- m- yeah, let's not ha- let's not have them have sex. But let's <laughs> let's, let's make it. Let's, uh, uh, miss, uh, Mrs. Rogers. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, Mrs. Bridges. I'm Mrs. sorry, Bridges. Mrs. Bridges and Rupert. You know, show him the the. You know all the fun stuff that happens on a spaceship sure. as a kid. Yeah, all the get, mischief. A lot, lot of mischief. mischief you can get in. Mischief is the key word there. Um, another way it could go is I would like to see maybe it becomes more of a drama too. Maybe it may be, or maybe maybe the show splits. You got the kid aspect on one show, and then in the evening prime time rolls around. Ben McAllister making it more of an action with maybe hints of comedy. Ben turns out to be a former space marine pilot who tries to go home again to help his family diner, but his past catches up with him and puts everyone in danger. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. maybe he's like a, a storied, uh, sp- like space spy, or maybe he was a big get, get big rid of the time. bar. Get rid of the bar bar aspect, right? Well, I mean, I'm saying he's he's going home to help the bar. Okay. okay, and then like and then trouble follows him, sure. or trouble just happens to show up at this space station, and, and Ben McAllister is forced to deal with it. I, I think that could be two different shows. There, yeah. I don't look know. At, look at you, you're getting two for the price of one, Michael. Only there you go frequent flyer miles number two. Only on couch pilots can you find something like that. Twofer? Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. It's funny because I, I, I this is the part of the show where we check out reviews, critic reviews, viewer reviews. We check out Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb. Look at these scores, kind of get a, a picture of what the public thinks about this. Um, the first one, I was talking about Dave Sindelar last time, who watches these weird things. Um, 
but uh, there's a guy out there who also watches a lot of odd old shows. His name is Mr. Satanism Fix. Ooh. <laughs> um, and he says, ultimately, there's little here that Earthlings would consider humor, although the laugh track clearly inserted at random tries its best to convince us otherwise. Starstruck is a horrible, detestable footnote in Star Wars history and influence, but it's one that's worth seeing, uh, just so future writers and directors will know what not to do. Ooh. Or they could just watch The Phantom Menace. So this oh. guy, scathing, scathing Jeez. review. This, this guy, okay, I'm going to describe this guy yeah. to you. All right, he's sitting in his mom's basement. Okay. All right, he's got four computer monitors. But he's in good shape, at least. No. He's got four computer monitors. He weighs about 420. Nice trim haircut, I imagine. Uh, no, it's, it's all uneven. It's not, it hasn't been cut in a long time. His mustache is like mine. Oh, you know, Jesus, when I, when no. I, when I grow it out. <laughs> and he's got acne, and he's got really thick glasses. And he, um, his favorite movie is War Games. <laughs> and uh, he, on one monitor, he has porn going all the time. Second monitor, he's like spying on like the. He's got his drones secu- out there. The security <laughs> camera for you know some naval base in yep, Taiwan. And uh, then he's just going on on the next screen. He's going through IMDb and yep. just. Anything that has to do with space that's not Star Wars, Just lambasting it. The original three, <laughs> fuck him. His mom calls down. Billy, it's time for dinner. Come on, mom. I got stuff going on. I'm sorry, Billy. Bring my dinner down. He reminds me of the guy from uh, The Hangover, uh, Zach Galifianakis' character. Uh, yeah. When he's, you know, he's like, "Where's my cupcake?" You know. <laughs> Just a fucking asshole, just jerking off. Just come all over this. Every one of his uh, keyboards. No black lights allowed down there. Just, God, just a piece of shit, dude. That, uh, We're, that's why I'm glad our show will never get to be like that fucking guy. Don't get me wrong. I will beat off in my basement. Okay, I I, I will do that. You don't have a basement. I don't. <laughs> I will get into my crawl space. Okay. Um. You know what I mean, though. I, I we're, not know gonna exactly. be, we're not going to be cynical and rude about this. No, shit. no. I mean, we'll tell you something's not good, but we're not going to sit here and just trash it. Right. We're going to tell you what it's about, and have, we're having fun with it. That's what we do. We have fun. Hey, we have fun. We don't want to perpetuate negativity. Nope, I have uh, enough of that. I will read one more review. Actually, you know what? Let me s- scroll down here real quick. Uh, no Rotten Tomato score, no IMDb score. Um, this was only posted from the guy who worked on the show within the past year or two. Right. Um, otherwise, I. I think over time, give it some time. I think people will review this more because it, it's it's a quick watch. It's like twenty six minutes, and it's it's goofy. People will come to this eventually because of us. Not yeah, definitely because of us. Um, viewer review from Christopher Mills. I remember watching it when it aired, and it stuck in my head, even though I never found any reference to it after watching original viewing of it. Uh, watching it now, I can see that it's not particularly funny, so it's no surprise it didn't go to series, but the effects, production design, and uh, makeup and effects monster masks were all pretty good for the time, which to me is questionable. Yeah. I think you could have worked a little bit harder. You, ma- you, you They made fucking Star Wars. Some, yeah, some of those guys were in. They were actually in Star right. Wars. They, they should have the They should have went. Hey guys, we're being a little fucking lazy here. For sure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is eleven eleven, and the temperature is sixty nine degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. Landing. We're, we're home stretch. We're, we're bringing it in. We're 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 on the 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 runway. On the, we're, yep. we're being told which uh, what do you call that? What gate we're going to? What gate we're going to? Slowing it down. We're we're we're, we're stretching our oh, preparing stretching out. mentally. Oh. Yep, to get up, and then we review. Yep. What out of our scoring final paperwork? System. It's a final paperwork. <laughs> But on our on our wings, our television program wings scale of shows between one being the worst, being a Roy Biggins, or seven being the best for Brian Hackett, and then all your favorite wings characters in between. Blake, what do you rate Starstruck? Do, well, you, do you need to know the chart? We'll go, go through the chart one okay. more time. I mean, I, I know what I want to say, but I want to make sure I have it. You got specific. it. I'm not going to go through all the descriptions of them. No. But um, number seven is is Joe Hackett or uh, Brian Hackett. It doesn't get better than, than the B Hack. Number seven, Helen Chapel, gorgeous little beauty behind the counter. So want to give her a little toss in the hay. I tell you what. Number five, Lowell Mather. Number four, Joe Hackett. 
Uh, number three, Antonio Scarpacci, the, the mild manner uh, taxi driver. And number two, Faye Cochran. And, of course, again at the bottom, that big, fat piece of junk, Roy Biggins. I have been, uh, what's there, episode five here? Mm, yeah. I've been known to dish out the Biggins. Yeah. But you know what? What's that? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give you a Biggins. No Biggins? I'm going to give you our Scarpacci. Antonio Scarpacci. Number so those three. Yeah. So three out of seven. Not good, but it's it's better. You know, I think over time, we will assimilate to what we've already seen. Right, right. And based on what I've seen so far, I would... I'm going to go Joe Hackett. I'm going to give it one more. I'm going to give it a four. Um, highly responsible, compulsive, <laughs> compulsively neat pilot. Um, that's what I give. I give it a four. You give it a three. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's, we're, we're kind of consistent. We are consistent. Yeah, it's it's not great, and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll come across a great one eventually. Sure, not yet, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. I, uh, this is Couch Pilot season forty seven <laughs> episode nine. I hate this one. <laughs> oh, you do? I thought it was great. I don't know why it didn't go to series. Molly fetch my teeth. Where's my bridge? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, good. I hope you have a good idea of what that is, and really, I, I I do recommend you watch it. Yeah. It's a it's, it's easy to find. Twenty six minutes. It's, it's it's yeah. You could do a lot worse. Um, we're not done. We got a lot more to go. Uh, so join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of Exo Man. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. <laughs> When Nick Conrad, a kindly physics professor, is paralyzed by marauding hitmen, he constructs a special suit that turns him into his superhuman alter ego, Exoman. Exoman's main crime-fighting tactic was psychological terror. He never actually touched a hair on his enemies' heads. All he had to do was show up. And that's all you have to do, folks. Just show up. Please show up. Show up. Subscribe to... Ooh, Catch pilots, boy doesn't even have to lay a hand on a hair of his villains. That I was I was looking for some of these uh, pilots to watch, and I came across Exo Man, and it was it was uh, you remember Faith Ford from Murphy Brown, the hot young girl. Oh yeah, um, she was hosting a show where she was talking about failed sci-fi pilots. I think that really spoke to her career at the time. Um, this was like in a montage of of crappy pilots. I, I had to edit. I had to edit. This is not, yeah, so you heard the montage. So this wasn't even necessarily a commercial. Like, I couldn't find a commercial for Exo Man, just a show talking about how this failed. So so, so someone doing essentially the same thing we're doing, but not with the bravado that we provide. Oh, yeah. right. Not with the swagger that we bring. We, we bring it. We, we, even if it's been brung, yeah. we'll bring it again. We will brung brought it once more for you. Find the entire episode on YouTube. Search Exo, E-X-O dash M-A-N. Be careful because there's some weird stuff when you type in Exo Man. We have we'll have the link in yeah. our show notes. Use our link. We will not lead you astray. <laughs> there's 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 like a it's almost like bodybuilding stuff with like extremely but it's YouTube so they're not naked but extremely scantily clad like bikini girls look like they're being spray tanned almost. It's a very bizarre thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, click the link unless you want to see some spray tan. That's your that's your prerogative. Um, as Bobby Brown would say. He would say it. Don't tempt him. <laughs> He'll do it. Um, email us, couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Check us out there. Send us um, your ideas, your questions, your suggestions. Your, uh, your comments. Yeah. Send us some of, your, some of your baby pics. Maybe you have a newborn. You want to send us a picture so we can see it. Maybe you want to send us pictures of when you were a baby. Maybe send us a picture of your pilot's license. I don't know. Oh, Whatever. That, yeah. If you have a pilot's outfit. If your wife... As a pilot's outfit, feel free to share that. <laughs> um, become one of our frequent flyers. You know, listen to the yeah. show. Yeah, it, um, we are going to do something special as this show progresses. As you know, we get more and more listeners. We are going to have a frequent flyer mile of program, and uh, you know everything from fan feedback yeah. to sharing links. It all adds up. It could get you some awesome prizes. TBD, right? To what? be determined. Oh, I already know what they are. Oh, you know? Oh, yeah. They're in your head. I got to crack that head open. You want, you want to hear one of them? Yeah. Folks, listen. <laughs> one of the frequent flyer miles rewards. 
What is that? An autographed pair of aviator, aviator glasses from me and Jason. Wow. We're gonna, we'll, we will sign a pair of aviator glasses. And that, can... that we, we will wear them on the show and then sign them. <laughs> I really cannot fathom a prize better than that. <laughs> I think it would be pretty fucking cool. So. You know what? Maybe next time on Couch Pilots, we will uh, talk about other prizes. I tell you what. Here's what we'll do. All right? The first person to email us at... Couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. And give us, you know, be honest. Give us your thoughts about the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't just give us one sentence. You know, but it doesn't have to be a paragraph, but kind of kind of talk to us a little bit. Two to three sentences. Two to three sentences. You will get that autographed pair wow. of ADA glasses. I would, can I, am I eligible for it? Nope. It's got to be somebody that we don't know. Oh, we, it's not, it has to be somebody that doesn't live in Illinois. No. <laughs> it just doesn't. It has to be somebody that listens to it. Not show. associated with the show. Yeah, right? there you go. That's the way to do it. Wow, that's a lot to think on. Um, that sounds awesome. I, I wish I wasn't associated with the show, so I could, <laughs> I could win. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time on Couch Pilots. Roll that piano. After this. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again. Roll that piano. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production. Produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.